I'd like to thank the organizer of this session for inviting me and uh, uh, I'm very pleased to see my former advisor back. <laughs> uh, today, uh, I'd like to talk about a second order and kill levels method on cold tree grids. Um, so as you know, levels method is, uh, is a method that uh, the original problem is surface problem. Right, given this uh, curve or surface in 3D, uh, it represents the geometric object by Eulerian uh, function. But it, uh, from its foundation, Levinson method is multi-scale because uh, what we need most is the, the region near the interface. We need fine resolution, but uh, away from the interface, we can uh, take coarse grid. Yeah, then um, Levinson method is uh, multi-scale from its foundation. So that, so that we'd better use multi-scale grids. I think there are basically these three kinds of multi-scale grids. Uh, first one is uh, on the uniform grid, we just mark um, mark grid cells that we are going to use. And the second one is on the uniform grid, we patch uh, final uniform grid. Uh, in this case, one, two, three, four, uh, final uniform grid patch we use. The third type is uh, poetry grid. So from the big uh, rectangle, we just split it, keep splitting uh, whenever needed. I think these three uh, multi-scale grids have advantages and disadvantages. I think the, the simplest one to use is uh, this one, but this one uh, obviously uh, does not save memory space, right? So on the fine uniform grid, we just mark uh, cells to use, so there is no space saving here. On the second one, sec there are uh, many people using the second approach. Uh, this is, is good, but in my experience, it's a little hard to program when these uh, grid patches overlap each other. The third one is quad tree grid. Uh, people say it's a little hard to program this. So anyway, I think uh, these three uh, quad tree grids have advantages, disadvantages. In our case, uh, our choice was this one. So quadratory grid is very efficient grid for implementing multi-scales. It starts from rectangle and splits, splits whenever needed. In 2D, it splits into four. In, in 3D, it splits um, into eight cells. So in 2D, it's called quadratory, and in 3D, it's called arctry. Yeah, for letters and method, we have uh, two automatic grid generations in quarter tree. Um, uh, given uh, a cell, we can detect if there is an uh, interface uh, inside this cell from these two Lipschitz estimates. The first uh, case is, let's say W is an interface point and V is one of the uh, grid nodes. If there is an interface point inside the double inside, um, for every node, uh, v, the distance from V to W cannot exceed the cell size, the diagonal size of the cell. So V of V minus V of W, uh, by the way, V of W is zero because we assume uh, zero level set. So V of V minus V of W is less than Lipschitz constant times the cell size. So we have this estimate. Another estimate is if there is an interface point inside the grid cell, one of the four, uh, among the four uh, corner points, we take the one that is uh, the most clo close, closest to the interface point, then V of V minus V of W, by the way, again, V of W is zero. So V of V uh, should be smaller than Lipschitz constant times half times of cell size. So we have these two uh, grid generation algorithm. Uh, so 
Oh, so by the way, both uh, grid generations guarantee finest resolution near interface, but practically they show uh, different behavior. With uh, uh, this one, so it has constant one, so let me call it uh, the generation with the uh, uh, constant one and the second one with the uh, half. Uh, yeah. So with one, in my experience, I found out that it seems with the the, the first Lipschitz estimate uh, almost minimal means it 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 puts finest resolution near the interface, but there can be a, a big ratio uh, between cell size. For example, here from for this small cell suddenly a very large cell can come next to it. With the half, uh, with the second one, it's almost balanced. Balanced means the cell size difference cannot exceed two. So both uh, work fine in my experience, but in general, the, this one is a little safer to use. Uh, and. Uh, are you taking distance yeah. function for phi? It's, it's phi the distance function. Yeah, distance function. Or it could be any function similar to distance function. Yeah. So if it's not distance function, we just take Lipschitz constant larger than one. Oh, yeah. yeah. It works in general. <coughs> yeah, and uh, I, I'm going to talk about uh, how to solve uh, PDE in uh, Cauchy Greece. Uh, first, a uh, quality grid is uh, good for implementing multi scales. The second one, um, I will derive some finite differences approximating derivatives. With the finite differences, um, we can make finite difference method for approximating difference, differential equations. The main difficulty of quality grid. Uh, is the existence of T junction node. So in this uh, quarter three, uh, so here there was a big uh, rectangle. It was split. While this guy was kept, the this rectangle kept uh, splitting. So at this node, we have small cells on the left, but we have a large cell on the right. The problem is. Whenever we want to approximate derivative, which is the uh, change rate, uh, we have on this node, we have left, top, bottom, neighboring nodes, but we miss one on the right. So we don't have a problem on approximating derivatives on left, top, bottom, but we miss here. So traditionally, uh, people, whenever we have these uh, node. So by the way, uh, on such node, we have left, top, bottom, so it looks like T. So this kind of node is called T-junction node. Whenever we meet T-junction node, for the missing neighborhood, uh, missing neighborhood, we approximate it. Though we don't have this uh, node, but we have a uh, node on the top and bottom using these two uh, we linearly um, interpolate the missing value by this. Yeah, this has been used. And uh, um, I try to find out the, the error term. The, from the Taylor series expansion, I found out that these, the error term of this looks like this. A uh, half of S5, this distance times S6 distance, with the second derivative. But uh, in this situation, so we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six neighboring nodes. The error term uh, involves phi sub y, y. But here we have three neighboring nodes in the y direction. So that we can estimate the second derivative using these three. So why don't we uh, compensate the error term so this was phi y y, and uh, I approximate phi y y using the, these three. With this, we achieve one higher order accuracy without increasing the support. 
I think this is important. I am not the, we are not the only one who tried uh, to kill the error term. Uh, Stefan Popinet was one of them. In their approach to kill this error term, uh, they looked more neighborly node on this side. But in poetry greed, anything can happen, so we'd better not increase the support. So I'd like to stress on this one. So we achieved one high order accuracy without increasing the support. Can we keep uh, doing this in 3D? This is the worst case can happen in 3D. So we have two uh, small cells and the, the medium cell and the large cell. So on this uh, three-dimensional T-junction node, we miss uh, two uh, neighboring nodes. So traditional one was, okay, if, we, if, we miss, if, if this point doesn't exist, interpolate from these two, linear interpolation. For this one, we have four, so bilinear, as we traditionally used. And uh, again, I tried to kill the error terms and uh, I got this formula. I used a symbolic calculator. Fortunately, we can treat arc tree grid as the same as we did uh, quad tree. So, so from now on, uh, with the third order interpolation allows us to treat T-junction nodes in the same fashion as a regular node up to third order accuracy, so, which means in T-junction node, we may miss some neighboring node, but we can uh, uh, disguise that the guy exists from the, the you know, this formula, ghost node. Yeah. So then, uh, dimensional map, since on each x, y, z direction, we have uh, neighboring nodes exist, whether it is real or ghost. So from now on, we can approximate derivatives in uh, dimension by dimension approach. So in x, y, z direction, we have this structure. We have node V naught. On the left, we have, on the right, we have neighboring nodes. So again, you know, one of them could be real or ghost. What about central difference? Uh, we have first order, second order, uh, finite differences, second order one, so standard one. So so by the way, these uh, funny difference is called, uh, uh, this one is called uh, short to value method. What about one-sided derivatives? If we approximate derivative from the right, we have this one and the left, this one. What about increasing the accuracy of one-sided difference? This and that. This is, they are first order method. So we have the, the mean mode stuff. Here we have defined uh, second derivatives. We have another second derivatives on this node. So we take the mean mode of the two. You know, that is the standard way to, to calculate finite difference. Yeah. So what about interpolation? Uh, on this code tree, if a point falls here, uh, we find the smallest cell, including the point, the cell has four corners. Using the values of on the four corners, we can uh, approximate the level function through this uh, bilinear interpolation. So bilinear interpolation is a second order method, and the people sought higher order interpolation. So one of them is uh, by John Strain. His idea is okay. So using these four points only. The second order is the maximum we can get. So his idea is to look for the parent cell. So this cell has the parent cell. In the parent cell, it has three by three uh, nodes, so that we can uh, calculate quadratic interpolation. But uh, it has a problem because on this cell, the parent cell uh, is the center of the parent cell is on the left the bottom corner. Uh, whenever we solve some convention problems, we are going to meet uh, oscillation. You know, in in a uh, convection problem has characteristic if the location of the parent center is the same as the information flow, we are fine, but 
it's different that we're gonna get some oscillation. So this quadratic interpolation makes sense, but in practice, it's not adequate in solving convection problem. So our idea was to look for the bilinear interpolation. By the way, bilinear interpolation is central. It has no direction, so it, it can be used in solving convection problems. The, I, uh, we found out that the error terms looks like this, phi sub xx and phi sub yy. But in the node, we have the we had the estimates for second derivatives at each node. Again, we take the mean mode of the thing, so we get the uh, so quadratic interpolation. And, uh, this one could be used well in solving convection problems. Yeah. So so far, uh, we uh, got the second order finite differences on cross three arc degrees. And we have the third order quadratic interpolations. Um, uh, in the Levinson method, it looks like this, phi sub t plus, the, it, it's a convection problem. If the u is given from outside, it's a linear uh, PDE, so we can use the semi-Lagrangian method. You know, x hat given x, xn plus 1 equals to the backward, to the characteristic flow, and then it involves interpolation. So, you know, the second order semi Lagrangian method, it has this frame and the, a, a place we need to put something is the interpolation part. So I just put the uh, interpolation into here and uh, we obtain the unconditional stability and second order accuracy and adaptivity. So what about nonlinear convection? In nonlinear convection, in general, we cannot use semi-Lagrangian method. Uh, you know, uh, for example, in the reinitialization equation, here it's a Hamilton-Jacobi type equation. The as you know, uh, Ojo and uh, his colleagues uh, found the general methodology, the EMO scheme. On the Hamilton-Jacobi, we Hamilton-Jacobi function is approximated by uh, monotone uh, numerical Hamiltonian and the uh, time is usually evolved by TBD RK scheme. Yeah. So here, uh, yeah, I, I should mention uh, subtle resolution stuff. In the visualization, the level set function, the interface position shouldn't move. Uh, this one was uh, uh, well described in the uh, Russo and Smerica paper and they suggest uh, to include interface point in the finite differences. And here we use adaptive time step. Uh, if you see, so, so th this red line is interface and we have one here and zero outside the, without the subtle resolution, so you see, the level interface is changing in the in the process of reinitialization, but with the subset fix, by the way, the, the movie is still going on. It's stationary. So subset fix is important. So what about adaptive time stepping? This is uniform and adaptive. You can compare the two. This is much faster because in reinitialization the time is actually fictitious. So that in larger cell, we can allow to use larger time step. That's why we get this speed up. So in this graph, uh, the adaptive scheme is uh, solid and the uh, so dotted uh, line is uniform grid. So you see that the convergence is much faster in adaptive grid. And with the subset fix, you know, 300 times or 400 times, it just gets there. The error doesn't get worse, just stay there, yeah. And then we try the inline test problem. Inline test problem starts with uh, a sphere, and uh, with this given velocity field, it deforms into a very thin film, and then velocity field is reversed, so that the uh, same film is deformed back to the original sphere. So theoretically, the sphere should be the same, but if we try uniform grid, you see, in, in the same film state, the resolution is not fine enough so that there is a difference. 
But in uh, objective agreed, so though almost the same number of nodes was used on the right case, we put more grid cells on the more important region. So it's much more successful. And uh, we compared our results with the particle level set. Uh, in, in the original particle level set by Doug and Knight et al., they use 100 cube uniform grid with some undocumented number of particles. And they obtained 2.6% uh, volume loss. And then lately, uh, they uh, published particle level set with the uh, quadrature method. In their case, they use first order quadrature method. They use 512 cube adaptive grid with some uh, particles. And they didn't report uh, volume loss. They just said uh, visually flourish. So in my view, uh, I think uh, visually, I couldn't tell the uh, difference between our result and their method, so hard to say. But in our method, 500 cube, 500 cube adaptive grid only, so no particles here, we obtained 0.47% uh, of volume loss. Yeah. And in this adaptive grid, uh, uh, people will be worried about any bad effect from coarse grid. So, you know, this is very coarse. So, we may be worried about any bad effect coming from coarse grid to the fine grid, but not at all. If you see the rate, uh, this table is for this problem. A circle is deformed into <coughs> You know, this, this complicated shape, again, you know, velocity was reversed and it should go back to the circle. At the final time, we compared the, we measured the accuracy and as you see, we get a perfect second order accuracy. Why the bad thing uh, doesn't uh, influence? Because in this case, Reinitialization, because the reinitialization itself is moving the information from the interface to the outside. So for each step, uh, bad things are coming from coarse to fine, but through reinitialization, the effects are and the moving back, so that we can have the sharp second order accuracy. Yeah, and the reverse method is not the only one that. We can try. We found out that we can try more because we have finite differences. First, we try the causal problem. So we we had the second order finite differences. We tried it. And then we got second order accuracy. And then this thing is important. Some method based on only on uh, Taylor series, we would get a stability problem. But in our case, the uh, discretization, the linear linear equation. Uh, the matrix is M matrix, which is desired in the elliptic problem. So there we can go on to the uh, Navier-Stokes equation. You know, the SLBDF projection method, these are the existing things well known. We just put our uh, finite differences here and uh, we just put uh, interpolation stuff in uh, here. And uh, on this uh, grid, we saw so no problems. We got second order accuracy. You know, we we tried uh, the Fourier vortex problem. The Fourier vortex problem has four vertices on the center, and the uh, outside is almost zero velocity. Do, 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 how how many minutes? Uh, yeah. yeah. So let, let me go quickly. Uh, so. I, I talked about automatic regeneration and uh, we can solve flow. So here I combine the Leverson method on adaptive grid with the flow. But if I try the uniform grid, look, look at this year. Year is disappearing because of numerical diffusion. Yeah. So in conclusion, uh, we introduced new treatment of T-junction nodes. The, we derive finite differences package and we introduce uh, quadratic interpolation. With these two methods, we, can, we could have solved the Levison method, the Poisson problem, Navier-Stokes problem. And my uh, colleague, Frederick Zibu, is uh, trying a uh, step problem. And uh, 
다 끝났네. 아, 네. 네. 자, 땡큐. 네, 이렇게 해서. What about speed? Uh...